I will be explaining you Lebesgue's dominated convergence theorem in this video. You can see this theorem in the fifth or oh, sorry fourth unit of measure and integration. Okay. Let me start here. You can see the statement. I will show you that in my note. Look at this. Lebesgue's dominated convergence theorem. This is the statement of this theorem. We have to memorize this statement also. We have to be get ready with the statement also in the examination. Okay. Because it is a named theorem. No. Most expected one. Okay. Lebesgue's dominated convergence theorem. We start studying from the statement. Let Fn be a sequence of measurable function on E. It means there is a measurable functions. Uh, sequence of measurable functions are there. It means F1, F2, F3, F4, F5 till Fn. It's a sequence. No. Sequence of measurable functions are on E. Okay. E means what? It's a measurable set. Within this measurable set, you are having this measurable functions. Sequence of measurable functions. Okay. And also you are having another one function that is G. And this function G is integrable over E. And okay. Another one function is G. And this function G is what? Integrable over this measurable set E. And Another one condition you are having modulus of Fn modulus Fn less than or equal to G on E for all N. It means <coughs> F1 less than or equal to G. F2 less than or equal to G. F3 less, less than or equal to G. Modulus of okay positive values. F1 less than or equal to G, F2 less than or equal to G, F3 less than or equal to G, F4 less than or equal to G, till Fn less than or equal to G, modulus of, okay, on E for all N, okay. And also another one condition is also there, that is sequence Fn converges to F, converges to F, okay, read like that, point wise, almost everywhere on E. Okay, the sequence you know, the sequence of measurable set converging to where? F. How it is converging? It converges to F point wise almost everywhere on E. Okay, here you have a definitions also for what is mean by converging point wise almost everywhere. There are definitions also. So here they are saying like that, okay. They are saying about your sequence Fn and there is a function g and this g is integrable over E and modulus Fn less than or equal to g on E for all n and the sequence Fn converges to F point wise almost everywhere on E. So if these conditions are there, then our you are having this F no. This F will be integrable, then F is integrable and this condition will be also satisfied if all these conditions are there. Limit n tends to infinitive integral f n over e is equal to integral f over e. Is that okay? Or you feel, uh, do you feel easy to learn the statement? Yes? Okay. So here, I hope you... Uh, you now feel that you can learn this uh, statement without any difficulties. Okay. First take Fn. Sequence Fn. And then G. Then modulus Fn less than or equal to G for all N. And then this Fn converges to F point wise almost everywhere on E. Then F is this F is integrable. And a limit N tends to infinite of integral. Fn over E is equal to integral F over E. Okay. Okay, let's start proving this theorem. First, you have to write the given. Given modulus fn less than or equal to g on g, right? Also, they are given uh, sequence fn converges to f point wise almost everywhere on e. Also given g is integrable over e. So, these things they are given in the statement, right? So, using these, you can in the next line, you can say fn and f are integrable. How? I will tell you. Look at this. G is integrable over E. Okay. You are having that mod Fn less than or equal to G. 
g is integrable this fn is less than or equal to this integrable g right so you can say this fn also integrable is that clear so now you are getting this fn is integrable this integrable fn converges to f then f will also integrable okay this integrable uh, fn converges to f so that you say this f is also integrable is that clear so that is how in the next line you are writing therefore fn and f are integrable is that clear now if two functions are integrable means from a proposition you can say this fn and f are finite almost everywhere on e is that clear if this and this are integrable means using a proposition there is a proposition uh, from that statement of the proposition you can say that fn and f are finite almost everywhere on e okay now you are having what modulus fn less than or equal to g no so this can be written like this okay fn lies between minus g and plus g mod fn less than or equal to g can be written like this okay that is why you are writing we have minus g less than or equal to fn less than or equal to g now what you are going to do is you will consider this inequality okay this two first consider fn less than or equal to g from this you can what you are doing you are bringing this fn to this side so that you will get 0 less than or equal to g minus fn is that clear now <coughs> what you are doing now this can be written like this no g minus fn greater than or equal to 0 and from this what you are saying is g minus fn converges to g minus f almost everywhere on e how you are saying this you know that fn converges to f right so if fn converges to f means g minus fn converges to this g minus fn converges to f no so g minus f is that clear g minus fn converges to what g minus f uh, almost here our fn converges to f point wise almost everywhere on e no similarly here g minus fn is also converges g minus f almost everywhere on e. you can write point wise almost everywhere on e that is also okay no issues okay is that clear till this now you are using a uh, the result of factors lemma by factors lemma you are writing this line integral g minus s f over e less than or equal to limit infimum integral g minus f n over e is that clear this is the uh, lemma factors lemma is also a named lemma it's very important okay you have to learn it i think this lemma will come in the third unit of measure and integration in that unit we can learn it okay so integral g minus f over e less than or equal to limit infimum integral g minus f1 over e now you are multiplying this integration so to uh, so that you will get this less than or equal to now what you are doing is you are giving this limit infimum to both terms first you are uh, integrating that is in between you will have one line infimum integral over e g minus integral over e integral f1 over e you will have this step next to this only after this what will happen is limit in okay put like this limit infimum you are giving limit infimum to both the terms multiplying so that here limit infimum having no any uh, work because you are not having any n term it's a constant it is constant g is constant one particular value so uh, here limit infimum having no any work but here you look fn fn means fn takes f1 f2 f3 f3 so many values have having to this fn no so limit and in, limit infimum limit infimum plays a role to what limit infimum plays a role plays a uh, key role in this place for this term okay 